messages. What happened? I asked, panicked. Is everything... Is everything okay? Everyone's talking about how you've snagged the biggest catch of the season. Sweetie Auntie is so proud of herself and so proud of you about how you got Saknan to run after you even before his visit here to the Sin Club Ball and all the rounds with hundreds of girls and their mothers throwing themselves at him. Sweetie Auntie said she heard Princey's mad at hell that you got over him so fast and complaining about you at a party in Dubai. And what are they talking about? How do they know anything? I'm going to have to call you back, Myra. I walked down a corridor and began strolling through my phone's social media news feeds. 670 notifications on Facebook alone, and my Instagram followers had swelled to 200,000 plus. And then I read why. The Daily Tale. Halal Burger Land heir Scott Tanvir's 30th birthday ball is a smashing success with tough zillionaires and society sirens. Lady Avenden dons £20,000 Avenden tiara for the first time since the royal coronation. Beatrice and Eugenie photograph leaving worse for wear. Scott Tanvir spotted canoodling with blogger Roya Khalil, a strange fiancé of Playboy Princey. Want 18,000 shares. Scroll down to view photos for the, of the best and worst dressed. This was accompanied by someone's blurry iPhone photo. No wonder. I'd been papped by at Harry Gulzar, the best PR. There I was, held by Scott's tentacles on the dance floor. In the next photo, his hand was on my waist. The Daily Tale was virtually getting me married off, thanks to Harry's photo leak that he'd hashtagged Scott Tanvir. Sweetie Auntie was probably distributing wedding suites by now. I felt sick. I put my phone on the stone railing of the balcony and leaned against it to take a deep breath. So, you and Scott, eh? said a voice I'd been longing to hear. I turned around, and there he was, the navy suit, with that same cocksure grin. Yes, I said in a challenging tone. Well, I was wondering about you and me. You and me, I said, a shiver passing through me. I don't even know your name. It's Olivier, he said. Olivier, it had such a nice ring to it. And I'm not currently making out with your friend on the dance floor like Scott, he continued. Ah, Imane, I thought. Sweetie Auntie would be horrified, but I was delighted. So again, he said, moving closer, I wanted to ask about you and me. Before he could get as close as I'd hoped, a stately lady with a shimmering tiara and her flaxen updo approached. Olivier, she said with an eclipsed accent. You're with her, I said, somewhat surprised, in a manner of speaking. I'm Lady Avenden's bodyguard, he whispered. He straightened and turned to the older lady, whom I recognized as THE Lady Avenden. She'd been born a Luxembourgian aristocrat, and Lord Avenden had been her second husband. After his death, she sold his debt-ridden ancestral property to the Tanvirs and was now enjoying a more prosperous existence. She lived in the dower house, adjoining the park. I supposed that Lady Avenden probably wanted to scold her employee for mingling with the guests. Ma'am, if I may, it's all my fault, I said quickly before an introduction could be made. Your bodyguard actually came to my rescue because, side note, she didn't want to get him in trouble. Oh, yes, my bodyguard, did you say? She commented dryly, a single eyebrow raised several inches above her, her faded blue eyes. Olivier? She looked pointedly at him. My phone buzzed and I excused myself to a corner. It was an attachment from Myra. Lucky escape, she'd written below it. It was High Society, Pakistan's Instagram account of Princey, sandwiched between a Lebanese model duo, determined determinedly living it up on what would have been our wedding night. I clicked my phone shut, shuddering to think that I had come so close to having babies with this man. For the first time since the debacle, debacle of being betrayed, I realized I wasn't feeling at all hurt. Olivier was walking from the balcony back into the party. It was typical of life that the most attractive man at a party full of wealthy entitled people should be the least appropriate, not even an invited guest as in a bodyguard. I would go from Princey to Tanvir the tycoon to someone's household help, I thought. I don't care. I never wanted to meet another prince again, ever. DJ Srilatha was now playing feel-good 80s music and I could hear it echoing on the terrace. It was supposed to be take on me, aha. Uh -huh. As the chilly outdoor air whipped my hair across my face, I tried to steady my breathing and felt a sense of calm I hadn't felt in a long time. I wouldn't get married, 
no more pressure. So what if I got too old to have a baby? I could freeze my eggs or adopt. I just needed to find a better paying career. Although after tonight, my social media following had gone through the roof. Not a bad thing for a blogger. Seriously though, no more men who seemed right rather than men who felt right. No more rishthas. No more eligible morons. No more following the money. I would make my own way in the world. I could at least try, I thought, rather than depending on somebody else for um, financial support. But first, there was one thing I had to do. I ran inside. Olivier, I called. Olivier, I was shouting now, and I didn't care who heard. Were you looking for me? He said, appearing from inside a knot of people. Yes, I said, smiling. I was. He smiled his crooked smile. The Daily Tale. Best or worst dressed? You decide. Princess Eugenie, Victoria Beckham, Lily James, Bella Hadid, click for more. Scott Tenvir is seen embracing Kylie Kardashian lookalike who has poured her curves into a barely there dress. Guess who that was? And there's just a little bit more. Europe's hottest princelings. Publicity shy Olivier. Youngest son of the Grand Duke of Luxembourg. Click for more. Olivier is the entrepreneur of eco-friendly high-rises in Scandinavia and is seen here in close conversation with blogger Roya Khalil, formerly photographed with Scott Tanbeer. Now, originally, I wanted him to be a bodyguard and I wanted him to stay a bodyguard. But my publishing editor was like, oh, come on. Like a happily ever after, like a romance novel. Sorry, Faisal, I just had to say it. So he is like another titled person, but he is very down to earth and he works for a living. So I think that's better than nothing. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, in a previous draft, she had an entire phone conversation with her ex-fiance and he basically told her that she emasculated him and he was trying to basically, she never got closure from it. So that was it. And I've had a lot of requests to turn it into a novel, but there's no way I'm doing that. I'm working on something entirely new. I hope it made you laugh.